Okay, we're finally getting into the gold of this process. You're almost at the point where you're gonna have your first partners on board. That's exciting. Round of applause. You've committed to the process, you've put in that little bit of setup work, and now it's time to start recruiting. Because we're taking that performance-oriented approach we've talked about through this video series, then we need to find something scalable, something that isn't gonna have huge overhead and increase in labor over time. But to get the setup right, we're first gonna start with doing the unscalable, a little bit of manual manual work just so we make sure we're doing things properly as we move forward with automation. Start with manual outreach and write to influencers one-on-one. -on -one. This is gonna teach you so much about communicating with creators. As you do so, measure open rates and response rates so that you can learn where you need to iterate on your outreach over time. If no one opens, iterate on your headline, make it more compelling to open your email. If no one responds, then revisit your copy and see if you can make it more concise and a little punchier just to hook influencers into response and getting the ball rolling. Most of all, pay attention to which pitch is actually getting influencers to respond and eventually become recruits. Here's a couple things you can keep in mind while crafting fantastic email outreach. Subject lines are super important. Make them compelling. That's the only reason someone will open your email. Add a personal touch. You're not writing to the president here. Don't be too formal. Be yourself. Represent your brand and what you stand for. I think you're probably pretty cool, pretty fun and outgoing. So let that shine in your outreach. Reach. You don't have to be super formal. You are writing to more of an artist than, say, a government official. Keep it short and sweet, small and concise. Keep things summarized. You don't need to write out a whole essay Wikipedia page about your company in the first email. Just be compelling enough to get the response. That's it. That's the only thing the first email is for. Speaking of which, you're gonna have to send five to six follow-ups probably over the course of a month. People aren't gonna see, open, and respond to the first email that you send in most cases. Once you hit five to six follow-ups, you can start to really spread out the distance and maybe follow up with people every three months or so to see if something's changed, but make sure you don't stop at one or two emails. You can also go multi-channel and add, throw in a couple of direct messages on social to point people in the direction of your original email outreach. Creators are getting so many messages that going multi-channel can sometimes help get their attention to you in the email inbox. Bonus point to remember to stay human and add that personal touch that I mentioned before. Okay, now that manual outreach should be working, looking pretty good, you have decent open rates, good response rates, and you have your first recruits already onboarded to your program, you can think about automating and scaling this up. In order to get emails at scale, you can use Modash. If you're not sure how to do that, then ping us or check out our product tutorials in our blog or in our video series series about Modash. There's so many ways to automate email outreach. Usually, especially in the beginning, we recommend to just use the tool that your team is already using. Your customer support team, your marketing team, somebody is sending emails inside your company right now at pretty big scale. Either it's sales outreach or marketing newsletters or customer support uh, via, via a tool like Intercom. They're sending emails, so see if you can just use the tool that's already being used. If not, then we don't have any official affiliation with these companies, but Woodpecker is one of our favorite email outreach tools, or you can take another direction and try something like Gmas, which is a free extension on top of Gmail already. Honestly, for the first kind of few dozen partners, we've seen people get away with just uh, blind carbon copying, BCCing influencers into the same email and sending them like that, but that will restrict your ability to personalize, so it's not my favorite tactic. At this point, you're sending emails, you really need to put your salesman hat on. You're gonna face rejection, you're gonna need to persevere, and you're gonna need to negotiate. Oftentimes in growth, speed is everything. Keep in mind as you negotiate that your time is valuable and customers are really valuable too. With that in mind, and the fact that we wanna be respectful of creators and their hard work and not come offering Kim Kardashian a toothbrush in exchange for a post, we want to build in some wiggle room for our negotiations. That could mean just having the flexibility to throw in some extra free product during the negotiation, or adding an activation budget like a starting fee. Or it could mean increasing your acquisition cost and offering to pay out more per conversion. You also wanna be flexible with content formats and creative. Starting this relationship off on the right foot is a really huge asset, because it's way easier to negotiate with a creator that's already in your program that already trusts you than someone who's just met you through an email. So be flexible, especially in the beginning, and get that relationship started. 
You should, however, really focus on those acquisition based payouts. You don't want to be paying per piece of content or per post because you can't optimize it over time. It's not going to scale very well and it doesn't necessarily guarantee ROI. On top of that, it's probably going to be significant upfront costs and you just can't guarantee the return. To bring it all together, our goal is to set up and scale an influencer recruitment strategy. That means writing emails manually and sending them manually at first so you can learn what works, then automating them using a tool like GMAS or Woodpecker, whatever you use in-house, making sure you stay human and add the personal touch whenever you can, empathize with creators, be flexible with your budget or your product if you have to be, put on your salesman hat and be ready to negotiate. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to write us if you have any questions about recruiting influencers, which tools to use, how to get emails, anything like that, modash.io, hit us up in customer support or ask for a call and we'd be happy to oblige you. Have a lovely day and see ya in relationship management, the next video in this series. Learn some tips and tricks figure out how to reduce your workload. It's going to be great.